first and foremost, enjoy your cycling and make sure that there are other things in your life as well. Now, cycling can be a remarkably addictive sport and it's very, very easy to become obsessed by it, which is fine when things are going well, but when things aren't going quite as well, it's very easy to get demoralized. That's why it's a good idea to have some other hobbies and also spend some time with your friends and family to give your mind a bit of a break because keeping yourself mentally fresh is as important as anything when it comes to cycling performance. It's a great idea to learn from as many people and places as you can. So online or from books, magazines, more experienced local riders, perhaps even a YouTube channel, although, although nothing immediately springs to mind. Anyway, gathering knowledge will ultimately help you get better quicker. And admittedly, not all of it is going to be applicable to you. It might not work for you. In fact, it might not even be right. But nevertheless, if just 10% does indeed work, then that's got to be worth doing, right? Do not worry if you do not have the best equipment. Now, I know that for a lot of us, many of us, in fact, actually looking at and lusting after expensive bikes is part of being a cyclist. But if you don't have an expensive bike, then don't worry because it is the rider and not the bike that makes the biggest difference. Just look after what you've got, keep it clean, keep it well maintained. And to be fair, if you get good results consistently, someone's probably going to start giving you bikes for free anyway. And if they don't give you bikes for free, actually working in a rubbish job, saving up really hard, and then buying expensive bikes is also part of being a cyclist. Now, for me personally, it took an awfully long time before I was able to ride the best kit. In fact, it wasn't until I started getting sponsored. And to be fair, when I did, I really felt like I'd earned it, and I have never, ever forgotten it. Try different things, things like mountain bike, cyclocross, track, BMX, even stuff like trials and dirt jumping will help you to become a better cyclist. They'll improve your bike handling, they'll make you more confident on the bike, make you more versatile, and they'll just help to fend off the mental staleness that can happen if you focus too much on one cycling discipline. When I was 16, 17 and 18, I used to race a range of disciplines. So I raced mountain bike cross country, I raced cyclocross, and I raced on the road. Doing this range of disciplines did help me to become a better bike handler. I think it also helped me to be more confident on the bike. And perhaps most importantly, it meant that I always really enjoyed my cycling because when one aspect of cycling got a bit too pressured or a bit too much, I had another aspect of cycling that I enjoyed just as much that I could switch to. Most major towns or cities will have a cycling club of some sort, and it's a really good idea to join one if you can, as it's the best way to get the most out of your cycling. First off, you'll make new friends, you'll quickly gain new skills, and you'll also get valuable knowledge from more experienced and older riders in the club. Now, some clubs will cater for all disciplines of cycling, whilst others may specialize in track cycling, for example, or perhaps mountain biking. So get on the web and find your nearest. I joined my first ever club at 17, and I'm still a member now, and it helped me tremendously, especially in relation to riding long distances in a group and how to pace myself, etc. In fact, my first ever 100 mile ride was within a club. Now, if you haven't got a club near to you that's easy to get to, it's worth getting together a group of like-minded friends. It makes cycling so much more fun. This one applies once you've identified and realized that you want to take your cycling to the next level and begin racing. Your plan and your goals could be both short-term and long-term. The questions you need to ask is, where do you want to be and how are you going to get there? Double world champion and three times Tour de France winner Greg LeMond famously wrote down three goals before he started his professional career. These were all incredibly lofty, but he did achieve them all. So along with a plan, make sure you keep a training diary. It's a really useful tool to monitor what you're doing day to day, week to week, and month to month. But a few years down the line, it's also a really nice thing to look back and reflect on. And finally, don't get disheartened if your first race doesn't go exactly to plan. You'll learn from every single race you do, regardless of how experienced you are, although the steepest learning curve will be, of course, right at the very beginning. So, look back, reflect, learn, move on, but most of all, don't worry. My first race, honestly, well, I actually got left behind because I couldn't get my feet in the toe straps. I chased desperately for the entire race, but never got on much to the pain of my dad who watched on in utter despair. And I finished dead last. So there you go. 
Anyway, for five key skills we think every cyclist should have or learn, click just down here. And how to train around a full-time job or study, click just up here. And to subscribe to GCN, click on the globe. And don't forget to like and share this video too.